Hello and welcome. My name is Vinicius, and today I'll show you the new updates to the containers extension of Windows Admin Center. Getting started with containers can be a difficult task if you are a Windows admin that has to use PowerShell or the Visual Studio Code. Commands like, for example, Docker PS, if you want to check the containers that you have running, Docker Images, for checking what are the images that you have in your container host are simple commands that every Windows admin will be using when dealing with Windows containers. For every container op operation, there's a corresponding Docker command. Docker run, Docker build, Docker pull, Docker push. These are all commands that you'll be using on a day-to-day -day basis to manage your Windows containers. However, there is a better way now. You can use Windows Admin Center with the new containers extension for some day-to-day -day operations. To get started, let's head into the settings, go to extensions, and the first thing you want to do is you want to add a new feed for WAC Insiders feed. This feed allows me to add the new containers extension that has been updated for Insiders. It's important to notice that you don't have to run the Insiders version of Windows Admin Center itself. You just have to add this new feed. Once you do that, the containers extension will show up as an available extension. You can install that. And once installed, you can go to the installed extensions. And you can check that the containers extension has been installed correctly. Now let's head back to managing my server. So this server that I'm going to manage is a container host. So the containers extension shows up nicely. I can click the containers extension. And the previous functionality that was in this extension is still there. I can see the summary. I can see the containers that I have running. I can see networks, volumes. But more importantly, I can see the images that I have hosted in this container host. I can select one of the images. I can see the details of those images and so on. Now, if I need a new image, I can probably check the Docker Hub. The Docker Hub is where Microsoft hosts all of our images like the Windows Server Core, for example, Nano Server, IIS, .NET. These are all images that Microsoft has pre-configured for you to use. You can get the information like, for example, what is the image name and what is the tag you want to use. Like, for example, for the Server Core image, we have multiple tags, including the 2004 that has been launched re recently. If we go back to Windows Admin Center, and you want to pull an image for Docker Hub, all you have to do is click Pull and provide the image and the tag that you want to pull and click the Pull button. If the registry that you want to pull an image from requires you to authenticate, you can click Registry Authentication, provide the URL, username, and password, and go ahead and pull that image. Once you do that, we'll actually store that information using the Docker standard. So you can click Existing Registry, select the registry that you have logged into previously, and just go with that. Now, I did that already. I have the Nano Server, Server Core, ASP.NET, and the SDK version of the ASP.NET available to use now in this container host. So now, I can actually create my own image. So I can click Create New. I can select if I have a web application, which is the option that we have so far, but we'll be adding new options in the future. I can select, for example, what kind of application that I have, and we'll be adding more subtypes here for application sources that you can use in the future as well. So today, we have a static web application folder that if you select, as you can see, we'll be using the IIS container image, or you can select the Visual Studio solution. And in this case, if I scroll down to the Docker file, it will be provided to me in a second. Now I have to provide where is the source of my application or what is the path on which my application on which my application resides. So if I check my structure of Visual Studio files here, I have a, an application called Docker Demo. So I'm going to select the folder, the C drive, Visual Studio. And then I have a Docker demo. I click OK. 
and we are going to check what are the projects that are under that folder. And we found that we have a Docker demo folder or a structure of a solution here. Now, we also give you the option, depending on what your application is running in terms of framework version, what is the framework version you want to use? And this is going to change the image that we are going to build this application. So if I select 3.5, for example, as you can see, the Docker file down here was changed to that. So we'll be changing the Docker file along the way as you provide more inputs in the Windows Admin Center UI. For this particular project, I'll be using the .NET Framework 4.8. In addition to that, if you want to run a specific script that your application requires you to do in order to be installed on the server, or in this case, in a container, you can also do that here. When you specify the script, we are going to pass that information in the Docker file as well. That is not a required step. All I have to do now is provide in a name for this image, like for example, my image, and then a tag, like for example, v2, because I already have one there. I'll click build, but this process will be running on the background. So I'll go ahead. As you can see, my image is being created here. I already have the version one of this, my web application, and now I'm going to create another image called my image, and then with the V2 tag. This will show up here in a second. As we wait for that, one of the things you probably want to do as you build a new container image is to validate that this container image runs fine. So I can go ahead and select my image, click Run, and then I have the options to run this container image in this specific container host. I'm going to name this My Test Container. I'm going to select what are the ports that I want to open, like for example, 8008, and then I'm going to pass on what is the port that I want to open from the container, because this is using NAT. So we are translating the port from the host to the port for the container. Or I can publish all ports that are actually listed inside a Docker file in case I did that in the Docker file itself. I have memory allocation, CPU count, and actually you can provide all the other parameters that the Docker run command would accept on PowerShell, except that we don't have those in the UI. So you can click, you can click the Add option and provide those parameters if you want to. What are the options that you could put here? Like for example, if you will, if you need a persistent storage, if you need another network, or if you want to pass on a environment variable. These are all parameters that Docker Run accepts, and you can do that here. I'm going to close this one. I'll click Run, and the container is now uh, being executed in here. So if I go back to the Containers tab, I can see that now I have two applications running, and one is called My Container. I was running this previously, and then the other one is called My Test Container that I just ran. So let's check if the application is actually running properly. I can select the container, and in fact, I can see that the port 8008 is mapped to the port 8 of the container. So let's check if that's working. So I'm going to say localhost, and then I'll pass on 8008. And this is, this is going to take just a second for ASP.NET to load this out of the container. And there you go, my application is running fine. Now that I checked my, that my application is running correctly, what I can do is I can push this container image to an external registry. So if I want to run this container image on other hosts, I can then do the same process of pulling this container image on other hosts. How do I do that? So let's select the image itself. I'm going to click the push button. And here you have two options. You can either run on the Azure Container Registry or you can run on a regular registry. What, are the, what is the difference? The registry option is pretty much similar to the pool option. It's, it's an OCI compliant registry. If you have the URL, username, and password, you just provide that information here, and we can go ahead and push. Now, if you do have a Azure account, we streamline that process a little bit. So if I select, for example, the Azure container registry here, this is going to use my Azure account and provide me already with a subscription and the registry that I have under that subscription. I can click Push, and this will initiate the process of pushing this image into the Azure Container Registry. There you go. So now you have all the new features or all the new functionality of Windows Admin Center with the new Containers extension. 
I hope you like it and we are looking forward for your feedback. If you need a new functionality or if you need something additional to the new functionality that we created, we'll be happy to hear your feedback. Thank you and see you next time.